Welcome back to Eastland English. As always, I'm Robert. I am Yudi. Native speakers often use idioms in the workplace. That's why we've made this video for you. This is common English idioms in business dialogues, test two. Directions choose the best definition for each of the underlined idioms. Number one. Okay. So we have arrived at the point where we can have a draft of a contract drawn up. Great! I'm happy that we can finally see eye to eye. A. Be equally tall. B. Disagree regarding most points. C. Have most of the problems in clear view. D. Agree completely. This idiom "eye to eye" is quite common in business dialogues. That's why we've included it as the first idiom. Due to the context of the dialogue, they have arrived at an agreement. Because they are discussing a contract, it doesn't make sense for them to bring up their relative height. So A does not seem to be appropriate here. In most contract negotiations. People generally start out with relative disagreement and work towards agreement. Katie says finally, right before see eye to eye. Because of this word, we presume that they have had relative disagreement up to this point. However, at this point, they likely agree. So B is out. To choose between C and D, we can go back to what Frank says. They can have the contract drawn up, and that means finalized. A finalized contract means that they agree completely on all of the terms. The problems are in the past now. D is the best choice. Now let's hear that dialogue with the idiom replaced with the common definition. Dialogue number one. Okay, so we have arrived at the point where we can have a draft of a contract drawn up. Great! I'm happy that we can finally agree completely. Dialogue two happens on the phone. Hello, Hank. Aren't you supposed to be at your desk by now? Yes, that's true. Unfortunately, I'm feeling under the weather today. A. Cannot come due to stormy weather. B. In bad health. C. Have something else to do. D. Am not in the mood to work. In this dialogue, Ms. Sims is likely the boss or supervisor of Hank, and she's phoning to find out what's wrong with Hank. Aren't you supposed to be at your desk? Is a nice way of saying you're supposed to be at your desk. This is a polite or formal way to say that he's not doing what he should be doing. Hank agrees and gives his excuse. Unfortunately, means bad luck, so it's not about his intention. Among these answers, two of them are not appropriate at all to tell your boss or supervisor. You would never tell your boss or supervisor that you have something else to do. Your agreement as an employee is that you put work first, so you cannot have something else to do. For the same reason, you shouldn't tell your boss that you're simply not in the mood to work. Neither of these are valid excuses to miss work. It is possible you would tell them to your friend, but certainly not to your boss or your supervisor. The idiom suggests that stormy weather may be a possible reason for him not to be at work. However, this idiom means I'm in bad health. B is the best answer. Let's hear the dialogue for number two with the idiom replaced. Hello, Hank. Aren't you supposed to be at your desk by now? Yes, that's true. Unfortunately, I'm in bad health today. Number three. The company's profits are up this quarter. I hope we will all get a bonus. Are you kidding? That only happens once in the blue moon. A. Very rarely. B. Every month. C. During the night. D. Never. 
In this dialogue, Mark is clearly excited about the profits that the company is making, and he thinks the employees will all get a little extra money. And Becky reacts with, are you kidding? Which means, are you joking? Right, she doesn't believe it. She then goes on to use the idiom. Let's see what it means. First of all, a moon does happen every month, but a blue moon is something different so let's get rid of B. During the night means every night, which also doesn't make a lot of sense if it doesn't happen often. Remember, Becky is reacting with shock, meaning she doesn't believe it, so it certainly wouldn't happen every night. We're left with very rarely and never, and there's a key word in here, the word only. Only is an adverb that implies that it does happen sometimes, just not very often. The best answer is A, very rarely. The conversation for number three should be, The company's profits are up this quarter. I hope we will all get a bonus. Are you kidding? That only happens very rarely. Number four. Did you have fun at the office party last night? The music and the food were great, but the boss gave me the cold shoulder all evening. A. Followed me around. B. Bumped into me. C. Spoke angrily to me. D. Ignored me. One of the key words in Julie's phrase is the word but. But is a coordinating conjunction that is used to link two opposing clauses, or two clauses that have opposite meanings. In the first clause, she says the music and food were great. Because the first clause is positive, the next clause, or the idiom, must have a negative meaning. To have a boss follow you around would be a good thing because it means you're very popular or important to the boss, but not a bad thing. So let's delete A. Bumped into me could be accidental. But all evening, to bump into someone all evening, it's kind of a weird thing to happen. It's also not likely, and neither is it negative or positive, so let's delete that one. Next, let's look at the word in the idiom cold. In the English language, we often use metaphors, and often idioms are based somewhat on metaphors. The metaphorical meaning of cold means to have no emotions for someone. To speak angrily to someone would be a hot emotion. It's much colder to ignore someone. D is the best choice. Shall we hear number four? Did you have fun at the office party last night? The music and the food were great, but the boss ignored me all evening. Number five. Our website is a disaster. It keeps crashing and losing our customers' orders. We could get a new one made, but it will cost an arm and a leg. A. Take a lot of time. B. Require lots of physical labor. C. Be very expensive. D. Not be worth it. In this dialogue, June mentions that the website of the company is not good. Andy then comes back with a possible solution. However, that solution comes with a cost. So what does the idiom mean? An arm and a leg. Usually, we think of the arm muscles and the leg muscles as being part of physical labor, but it is not what this idiom means. Clearly, no one works hard or uses physical energy to make a website. It's mostly mental energy or mental labor. B is not the right choice. Even though it could take a lot of time, that also is not the correct meaning for the idiom. D is also not what the idiom means. The idiom means it's very expensive. C is the best choice. So let's hear the dialogue again with the common meaning for the idiom. Our website is a disaster. It keeps crashing and losing our customers' orders. We could get a new one made, but it will be very expensive. Number six. 
Our new employee says that he has experience, but I am not sure that I believe him. Really? I think you should give him the benefit of the doubt. A. Try to see him in a positive way. B. Believe him even though it's difficult. C. Check his background thoroughly. D. Believe your intuition and fire him. The meaning for D goes a little bit far, although believing your intuition may be acceptable to go and fire someone just because they don't trust them is a little bit too far, so you could probably make the choice based on that. D is out. One of the key words in the idiom is benefit. Benefit is a positive thing, and even though it does make sense to check his background thoroughly, there's nothing really positive about it. So let's delete C. Doubt means you're not sure about something. The benefit of the doubt is the good side or the positive way of not being sure about something. A is just positive. B is the best choice. You have to try to believe someone even though you don't really believe them. Number six should go like this. Our new employee says that he has experience, but I'm not sure that I believe him. Really? I think you should believe him, even though it's difficult. Number seven. Have you heard? The security guard says that he hears eerie screams coming from the heating ducts at night. Don't worry about it. That guy is off his rocker. A. Spends too much time in his chair. B. Is not able to hear well due to his age. C. Makes up stories often. D. Is not able to think rationally. In this dialogue, Ted is clearly afraid. Perhaps he believes in ghosts. And the guard is reporting ghost-like screaming at night. So he's worried. And Tulip says, oh, don't worry about it. That guy is off his rocker. Rocker is another name for a rocking chair. And when I was young, I used to think that this idiom had something to do with a rocking chair. But it doesn't. It means something else. So A is out. Also, it does not relate to his age at all, even though that could be a good excuse for not hearing things correctly. Makes up means to lie, and that would be an intentional thing. But off his rocker does not mean that he's lying. It means that he does not think rationally. We usually use it to say someone is crazy. They say things and believe things that we don't believe at all. D is the correct answer. Dialogue number seven should be... Have you heard? The security guard says that he hears eerie screams coming from the heating ducts at night. Don't worry about it. That guy is not able to think rationally. Dialogue number eight. Oh no, I just found out that the company is transferring me to the downtown branch. Well, you never know. It could be a blessing in disguise. A. A terrible thing that you don't know about yet. B. A good thing that seems like a bad thing. C. A chance to wear a different uniform. D. An opportunity that only seems like a good thing. Yudi is clearly upset that she had to leave her old job. Ken is trying to reassure her by saying it could be a blessing in disguise. A disguise is a costume or makeup that hides the true character of what something actually is. It hides the real identity. Although a uniform is something that you wear, it's not a disguise. C is not correct. Because Yudi is upset and Ken is trying to reassure her, meaning make her feel good, he wouldn't suggest it's a terrible thing that is waiting for her. A is also not correct. 
A blessing means something fantastic. It's a good thing to happen in your life. It's lucky to have a blessing. D is the exact opposite. D means something bad that seems good, but B is something good that seems bad. B is the best choice. Let's hear conversation eight with the idiom replaced. Oh no! I just found out that the company is transferring me to the downtown branch. Well, you never know. It could be a good thing that seems like a bad thing. Number nine. I thought that you agreed with me on the new marketing plan. Why did you act that way in the meeting? Hey, relax. I was just playing the devil's advocate. A. Arguing with you to tease you. B. Pretending not to like you. C. Trying to bring up counterpoints for the sake of argument. D. Making you look good by agreeing with all of your points. From the tone of the dialogue, Anne is upset. So clearly, Jerry did not help Anne in the meeting. Anne is upset that Jerry did not agree with her. Right, so D can't possibly be correct. The devil in our culture is obviously something negative. Clearly, Anne thought Jerry was acting in a negative manner, but then he did say, "Hey, relax," meaning calm down, and then he used the word "just." He's trying to convince her that he was doing something good, even though. She thought it was negative. He can't possibly give that excuse and say he was teasing her because teasing is also negative. Let's look at the final word, advocate. Advocate is another word for lawyer or someone who speaks on someone else's behalf. A lawyer often brings up counterpoints to arguments. That means. Points in opposition of the positive points in order to clearly understand the argument. C is the best choice. Let's hear the conversation with the common definition. I thought that you agreed with me on the new marketing plan. Why did you act that way in the meeting? Hey, relax. I was just trying to bring up counterpoints for the sake of argument. Number ten. Did you recently leave your job working for Mr. Butler? Yes, I did. I was told that he had the Midas touch, but I did not see that. A. Likes to hug and kiss employees. B. Enjoys having pets. C. Is very successful at making money. D. Has a very large office and likes golden furniture. In this dialogue, Carla is quite surprised that Juan left his job. Right. She probably knows that Mr. Butler has a reputation of being a very, very rich man. The name Midas refers to a king of legend. It means it's a mythical character. This king Midas would touch something, and it would turn into gold. So he became very rich because everything he touched turned. To gold, we use this idiom to refer to people who are very successful at business. C is the best and only answer. Let's hear the final dialogue with the idiom replaced. Did you recently leave your job working for Mr. Butler? Yes, I did. I was told that he is very successful at making money, but I did not see that. Thank you for watching our video. We hope you learned a whole bunch of new idioms today. Please like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to click the bell for notifications. That way, you'll be notified every time we make a new video. See you next time. Bye.